Hello my friends, it's Roger once again with good news and bad news. The good news is that we now understand the nucleus of the atom and why these things that have been unexplained are now easily explained. is because the nucleus of the atom is not a bunch of big protons which are positive and then a bunch of little tiny electrons floating around which are negative because that's impossible. Secondly, this is what it is, is that all, all matter that exists is made from the electrons and the electrons are a positive and a negative together and only the negative portion is explosive. I get into this in extreme detail and I show it in experiments as I will right now. Now let me just start off by saying that the problem with science is that everything they think they have already assumed is correct, they have to build from that foundation and they're wrong about everything. Einstein said light can't accelerate. Light can obviously accelerate. There's light and here it is accelerating. Light is obviously a particle. As it accelerates it pulls itself out of the wave that is the compression that it's forming as it the sphere of magnetic influence goes forward, but it is a particle and it, it can accelerate and it is explosive and it creates Higgs fields and these Higgs fields are polarized pulsating patterns of a polar particle spinning like this because it's got a positive and a negative corners on it and they bang and they spin like a crazy creating these polar effects which are excited and not excited particles because only the red part excites the black part doesn't excite so as the red hits something it excites it then the black comes and doesn't excite and then the red hits and excites and the black comes and doesn't excite that's why you see these polar spinning patterns now in addition to that, we have this is the particle right here, and we've seen them in both red and black. I mean, uh, red and uh, green, and um, <laughs> that's what they do. Now, this one here is one that came backwards, I pierce, which because when they spin in one direction, they send out these polar patterns, and if they spin in the other direction, which I only saw this one, so I'm not making any big claims. And Rod Warren is the one that created this Venturi. Absolutely fabulous. When I saw the stuff he was doing, it blew my mind and I've been working with him ever since and, and uh, it's absolutely amazing. Anyway, this appears to be antimatter turned into matter. Now, that's something to think about because they're, they're particles. There's no question they're particles. Now, uh, and there's no question they can speed up and slow down. Einstein was wrong about everything. That sped up light, and that's where it's slowing back down again. So, we got to start from where we open our minds to the re reality and the possibility, at least, that the assumptions that were made were not correct. And here's more assumptions that aren't correct. Here's another assumption that's absolutely wrong. It talks about the magnetic field is, is created by liquid iron in the planet's outer core. No, it's not. It's created by our spinning particles of, of nothing more than electrons that are semi-attached to the earth in gases that spin through nothing more than the same electrons that are in photons coming through space from every luminous body and we're spinning through them rubbing our electron mass against that electron mass as we cascade through the solar system and through the universe. That creates our outer atmosphere thousands of degrees because the scrub and at the Earth it's about 80 degrees. The Sun is the same thing. The Sun is going through the universe and through the solar system, ripped through the arm of the Milky Way, and as it does, it spins as well, and it creates enormous amounts of heat on its corona. M millions of degrees, millions, 6,000 on the surface of the Sun. They can't explain any of this. I can explain every bit of it with electronic flood theory, and it's time to start and open their eyes and open their minds. Now I've been suppressed on everything that I've been saying because this has been eight years um, and, and it, it, this, this is not welcome 
news, but it's true. And if we don't deal with the reality of it, we're, we're in real trouble right now because we're overcharged. That's exactly what's going on. The earth is nothing more than a, a capacitor in, in one measure. It spins through and rubs through the atmosphere that we're grinding through, forcing electrons into it, which is heat. Our earth is overheated, which means it's overcapacitive. It has too much electrons within its structure to to stay at that temperature. It's just, oh, it's overheated. It's going to continue to overheat. If we are going through denser atmosphere, if it's the vacuum of space, which is not a vacuum, it is electrons in cascades. If we hit a denser spot, we will grind harder. We will heat up more. That's maybe what's happening. But we're absolutely overcharged right now, 100% for certain. All right, this is the Milky Way, let's say. And the core of the Milky Way is the hottest part. It's because it's glowing hotter. And everything else is spinning around it. And it's concussing with everything that it's coming into. That's why everything is bending backwards, which creates this crushing effect on the core. But it's because everything's spinning and there's stuff out here. And it's going to crush into it. It's pushing it back. Now, if the stuff out here is whiter and has a lot more stuff into it and we happen to end up bashing into it, well, then we're going to get hotter and hotter because we're scrubbing into more and more dense stuff. Simple as that. Okay, my friends, they now are admitting that the standard model is wrong. Now they're saying, could the standard model be wrong, exploring lepton universality? Well, what does that mean? The standard model said there's only a certain number of particles that exist. They call them quarks and leptons. Now, but then all of a sudden they found that these, these other things they call mesons are creating particles. There's no way in the world they can possibly account for. None. Zero. Impossible. And now they're admitting it. And the only reason they're admitting it, let's only go back to, uh, to December of 2019, uh, because Rod Warren and I have shown that this is 100% certain that they're wrong. And now they're finally having to admit it. This has been going on for five years. They've known this. But now it's finally come to a head and they are starting to admit this. Okay, now that there's no real way they can get out of it, they have to admit, but they're saying, oh, we're going to have to analyze more data. But this has been going on long enough, and they realize 100% now, and they're trying to figure a way of accounting for this and still hold on to Einstein, and they cannot because the core is totally different. Light can accelerate. Light is particles. But listen to what she has to say. And here what she says is, well, there's got to be a new particle we didn't know about. No, they just have to realize that the core is made of electrons. And that's the only way it works, and it works very well. Well, what that means is that there's something wrong with the standard model. That's it. We found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. In fact, the only way we think we can explain what's going on is if there are new particles in the universe associated with new physics processes beyond those that we understand, and that these new particles are interfering with the B mesons as they decay and suppressing the decay to muons compared to electrons. Now, if there... that turns out to be the case, that will truly be momentous. All right. Yeah, that would truly be momentous because it's not correct. The, the, they want to hold on to the fact that light can't go faster than this and all the kind of different things that they're saying, which is all wrong, and still maintain some way of accounting for the Bohr model. Well, they can't. The Bohr model says that there's protons that are positive, big chunks in the middle. And for some reason, the negatives go flying around the outside, which, no, they, they would slam into the positives. It's, it's, the whole thing is wrong, and the number of excuses that have been made is just astronomical. So it's time to get out of this nonsense and start listening to truth and reality. They know it's wrong. Here, where's another one?
It was the same, same time frame back in December 2019. They came out with the new boson appears in nuclear decay, breaks the standard model, so it's just not right. And they say it's been going on since 2015, but I, I'm telling you right now, as far as I'm concerned, it's with the stuff that I've been showing over and over and over and over and over and over that, that proves it. And finally, they're going to have to resolve to stay, start taking a look at this stuff. All right. Okay, RT asks a lot of questions, and um, and they seem to be interested. Now, if they are, I am perfectly willing to engage. So, make a comment on this video, and I will get back to you, my friends. I have commented on your videos. I've never gotten any response, but that's I don't think I'm being heard. And you probably won't even hear from me on this one, because I think I am being suppressed. That's just, um, I have to be pretty... It seems pretty evident. I'm not getting much play. Okay, my good friends. I work, as you know, in a lot of realms. I do soft tissue fossils and all that stuff. We have DNA certified and everything. But I also am deep into physics. And if you can understand the physics and the nature of molecules and atoms and electrons and electricity and heat and lightning and light and energy and all of that stuff, then you got a chance of understanding how matter forms and changes. And that is what I understand. And he is the best explainer I've ever seen in my life. So I will explain my explanations against the explanations they will make here regarding the Bohr model. We're going to start there. But this guy does everything. And, he, and, and I'm really excited about the, being able to find this. Because I, I couldn't find anybody that really had an understanding of, of a nice way to present what the original theories were. Because they're, they're, they're very confusing because they're not right. Now, he's doing what he can to present it in a logical manner. So let's start. In the next video, that's what we're going to do. All right? I love you all, and we're going to have a great time. This, is, this really excites me. We're going to take one of these topics at a time, and the first one we're going to start with is a Bohr model. All right? Thank you. I got to throw this in. I just got this from Christine uh, Kalu Dragon, and she sent this out. And they say they found a gold-filled crystals and all this in a potato. Well, what they have found here is a lung. I'm almost a hundred percent sure. Now they come right looking like lungs, just like us. That's been DNA certified human lung. They come round like this, which is what this one is. All right, that's a round lung. It didn't change the way that one did. Then they say they come like this, and this is where the big cavities in the lungs are. That's why they filled up with, with different crystals. And the reason the crystals are different colors and so forth, in it, because they will start with one type of a crystal, like a magnesium or, or um, something that has a color to it. And then they will just continue to grow. That's, they, they expand on their own structure, their own crystalness. And then you get them like this, which, you know, you put a little water on, you can see them a little better. This one here is, um, this is a lung where I think the guy was a smoker. <laughs> you see all the black stuff at the bottom? Uh -huh. Now that's where the air enters in there. That's why these are all cavities. And then they fill up with crystals. Now sometimes the crystals will be just silicon and just normal stuff. And sometimes they'll be real real colored crystals and so forth. Now this is just I believe a heart, so it's not but but the the key is is if the chemistry is there, it will fill in the places that that will start to grow crystals. And this is all crystals too. Now, they're all quartz crystals, basically, which is silicon. But if there was different other metals in there, they would start to grow. You know, of course, you'd have to have a continuous source of metals flowing in the waters that are surrounding it, continually bathing it for years and years and years and years. And then they will start to 
grow crystals like this. You see all the different colored crystals here? That's what happened to this. That's another lung right here. This is a lung too. It might be a heart. I think this is a heart. But anyway, uh, this is not something that should be avoided to look at. It's really kind of interesting. And I, you know, my stuff is DNA certified. That's DNA certified, 100% human. And I have giants, and I have regular creatures, and I have bones like this. And we have new species that are called notos. They have different feet than ours, but they're hominids. And um, there's a lot to think about, so I'm going to leave it at that. But if, if, if you just don't like physics, stay with me because i got a lot more.